I will present, I'll be presenting the uh, how to get chosen cybernetic security from uh, lossy trapdoor functions with minimal lossiness, and this is joint work with Scott Yillick. So let me first start with a standard communication scenario. We have a client and a server, and they want to communicate over an insecure channel, and also we always have the presence of the adversary. And uh, ideally, we would like to be able to protect against all possible attacks. Uh, this seems like an overshooting. Modeling all possible, possible attacks seems like a, a very hard goal to achieve, if possible at all. Uh, so for public key encryption, the golden standard has been uh, security against uh, what we call adaptive uh, chosen ciphertext attacks due to uh, Rakoff and Simon, the definition in the uh, early 90s. So more formally, uh, this notion is uh, modeled by the following interaction. We have the adversary and the public key encryption scheme. Upon seeing the, uh, the public key, the adversary gets to issue uh, decryption queries to the decryption oracle or to the algorithm. And uh, after this first phase of attack, he gets the uh, challenge uh, uh, ciphertext, which is the encryption of either uh, 0 or a 1, if we are talking about uh, bit encryption schemes. And then in the second round, uh, he gets to issue more, uh, more queries, more decryption queries, subject to the uh, restriction that all the ciphertext he queries, the oracle, are different from the uh, challenge ciphertext. And uh, at the end of the interaction, he outputs a bit B prime, and uh, the security requirement is that uh, this interaction doesn't give uh, much information to the adversary in the sense that if the adversary is efficient, then the probability he uh, corrects the, the bit B, uh, he, he guesses the bit uh, B correctly, is uh, not far from 1 over 2. It's only negligibly uh, close. And uh, there has been a long line of uh, research uh, on how to achieve this uh, notion of security. Uh, on the upper part of this uh, timeline are generic constructions starting from the work, the work from Dolef, Dao, Edwork, and uh, now, uh, all the way to uh, these two recent constructions and also several constructions uh, based on the con concrete uh, hardness assumptions. And uh, in this uh, talk, I'll try to focus on these two uh, most recent works because uh, these are the works that are mostly related uh, to our work. So let me uh, define uh, lossy trapdoor function for the third time. Uh, and uh, so lossy trapdoor function, we say it is, it is a family of functions and uh, where the, the sampling algorithm, the generation algorithm, can operate in two modes. So in the, in the injective mode, the description of the function output by the generation algorithm uh, is, a, is a function which is injective, is one-to-one. -one. And also given the trapdoor T, also output by the inversion algorithm, uh, one can recover pre-images. In the, in the lossy mode, uh, the, the, the lossy functions, are the, the, the property they have, they have lots of collisions. In particular, the, the size of the range of this function is much smaller than the uh, input size. And uh, in the, the, the number of the, the size of the range is 2 to the n minus L. And the computational requirement we have for this uh, family of functions is that uh, given the description uh, of a function, we cannot tell, uh, no, no efficient uh, observer can tell whether it, this, this describes a lossy function or an injective function. And uh, just let me give a, a picture of how our result fits in the, in the previous work. So Piker and Waters gave uh, uh, the definition of a very strong primitive called all but one trapdoor functions, and they saw how to go um, in a black box way from all but one trapdoor functions to uh, CCA secure public key encryption. And uh, also they use lossy trapdoor functions to instant instantiate this primitive. Uh, and the, the required amount of lossiness turned out to be uh, high. Almost they needed uh, the lossy function to lose almost all information about the input. Uh, in subsequent work, uh, Rosen and Segev gave uh, uh, strictly computational analog of these uh, all but one functions. And they called these uh, uh, correlation, the one way and another correlated inputs. So they simplified the security proof of how to get CCA security uh, from uh, uh, functions that are uh, one way under correlated inputs. And again, instantiating these, uh, these functions uh, from lossy trapdoor function, the lossiness amount, the required uh, amount of lossiness is again rather high. So in this work, we build on the Rosen Segev framework. Especially, we consider the same construction they propose in their uh, paper. But uh, we saw that uh, you can instantiate uh, 
this notion. So there are uh, instantiations, uh, instantiations and uh, input distributions that are uh, one way, uh, correlated input distributions, uh, starting from lossy trapdoor functions with a very small amount of lossiness. In particular, not even a bit, uh, a polynomial fraction of a bit is enough. So as an outline of the talk, I'll uh, first give uh, some definition about what it means one way and under correlated inputs, and uh, briefly sketch the rosen Segev construction, and then I'll go to the main part of the talk, which is how to achieve CCA security, uh, starting from lossy, slightly lossy, lossy trapdoor functions, and uh, I'll also give a, a construction of a based on modular square, squaring function of uh, such a lossy trapdoor function that loses only a small amount of bits. So the, let's start with a family of uh, efficiently computable functions. And the WY's product is defined as follows. The generation algorithm simply samples W elements, uh, W description of functions, by invoking the, generator, the generation algorithm W times independently, with independent uh, uh, randomness. And uh, on input, uh, uh, a vector of, of W components the evaluation algorithm simply applies uh, each function to the corresponding entry. And the one way in its requirement is uh, no efficient adversary given the description of the functions and the corresponding outputs could uh, recover the initial input. Let's say this is the definition for injective uh, functions, uh, where the probability here is taken over uh, inputs sampled uh, according to, the, to this distribu distribution CW, and also over the, uh, the randomness creating the, the generating the descriptions and the randomness of the, of the adversary. And uh, building on this notion, they presented the construction of a CCA secure scheme. Uh, the basic components for this scheme is uh, injective trapdoor function, uh, which, is under, which, which is one way under CW correlated inputs. I'll elaborate more on this, what I mean, what is this distribution CW. Uh, they also need a strongly enforceable one-time signature scheme and uh, a predicate which is hardcore with respect to this family of functions and with respect to these uh, distributions. And the construction is rather simple. Uh, you f you f they first invoke the generation algorithm to get uh, W pairs of functions uh, along with the corresponding uh, trapdoors. And in the encryption scheme, every time we want to encrypt, uh, we generate the verification key and secret key pair uh, using the uh, generation algorithm of the signature scheme. And then the, the, the bits of the ver verification key uh, are used as selectors of which functions to use in the, uh, in the encryption. And now you can think of it as, as the randomness using the encryption, these uh, tuples. And uh, for the rest of the scheme, the, the bit uh, is masked with a hardcore uh, predicate, and then at the end, everything is bundled together with a, with a signature that serves mostly as a, as a proof that this, the, the ciphertext was correctly uh, formed. Uh, I won't get into the details of the proof. What is important for the proof is there are two requirements from this uh, uh, input distribution. One requirement is this, the, the main hardness assumption. So we need uh, whatever F family of function we consider to be one way under whatever uh, distribution we consider. And the second requirement has to do with the CCA proof and uh, the ability uh, of the simulator to uh, almost perfectly uh, simulate the decryption, being, being able uh, to reply to decryption queries. And this uh, requires that uh, the whole, uh, the entire input uh, uh, vector is reconstructable by given only a single uh, component. And uh, naturally, this led Rosen and Segev uh, to consider what they call the W repetition distribution, which is simply just pick a n bit string, and then from x2 to, uh, through xw, everything is equal to uh, x1. Uh, unfortunately, so this already satisfies the second requirement, but in order to prove that uh, there exist uh, the families of functions that are secure under, uh, with respect to this W repetition, they needed to start from lossy trapdoor functions that are uh, highly lossy in this sense. So they, they, they had to lose almost all the information uh, from the input. Uh, interestingly, in the full version of their paper, they give a generalized construction. 
And uh, this construction, the only additional component is this error correcting code from an alphabet uh, uh, with an alphabet sigma. And uh, k is the, the length of the plane where the w is the length of the, of the code words. And also this code has distance d. And the, the construction is uh, almost identical to the previous one, except that here, instead of pairs, uh, we have w tuples of uh, uh, sigma element each. Again, we also sample the corresponding uh, trapdoors. And again, the, the encryption is uh, almost uh, similar, except that now we first encode, uh, using the error correcting code, the verification key, and we use the output uh, uh, symbols as uh, selectors for which functions to use. And uh, the rest of the, of the encryption scheme uh, is identical with before. Now, uh, let's see what, from, for this uh, new construction, let's see uh, what are the, the requirements. So again, the, for the CCA security to go through, the hardness assumption is the same, so we have the same requirement for the input distribution. But now the second requirement is uh, somewhat relaxed in the sense that uh, in order for the simulator to uh, reply to the decryption queries, it should be the case that uh, the, this entire input vector, x1 through xw, should be reconstructable from any d distinct uh, xi's, as opposed to one that was the case in the, uh, in the simplified construction. Again, recall that this d here is the distance of the error correcting code used. So the starting point of this work is, okay, now considering this new uh, input distribution, if we want to start from a, a lossy function, how much lossiness should we require from this lossy function in order to achieve one wayness under this distribution? And uh, to address this problem, we start with a very simple obs observation that turns out to be uh, crucial for this uh, construction. So let's say we start with a one-way, uh, with, a, with a lossy family that loses L bits and has domain the N bit strings. And consider we have an input distribution, CW, that has uh, sufficient mean entropy. Let's say the mean entropy is mu, where mu is larger than this value over here. And now consider the, the two ways we can sample functions from uh, from this family. So first we have a vector of W lossy functions sampled according to the, to the lossy, in the, in the lossy mode, and the W uh, sampled according to the injective mode. Now, if we get this output vector, so apply the, the input one by one to the, uh, apply to the, the functions one by one to the input uh, components, and because of the, of the lossiness property, uh, this vector over here takes at most 2 to the w times n minus l uh, possible values, whereas because of injectivity, this uh, vector over here uh, takes 2 to the n times w possible values. Uh, this in particular means that now given the whole, the entire vector over here of outputs, uh, if the input distribution has entropy mu, even given now this output, there is still uh, sufficient uh, remaining entropy or stated in a different way, there are super polynomially many possible pre-images given uh, these uh, functions. Whereas if, if the function were sampled uh, according to the, in the injective mode, there's only a unique, um, there was only a unique pre-image. And now uh, we are using also the fact that uh, these, the, these W descriptions, the sample ac according to the lossy mode are computationally distinguishable from the uh, W function sample according to the injective mode. And uh, so because of this uh, super polynomially many pre and unique pre over here, it's not very hard to see that uh, any inverter uh, that could recover the entire input vector given this could serve as a distinguisher between those two, which is not possible uh, by the assumption on the lossy trapper function. So stated uh, otherwise, uh, if we start from a family of lossy trapdoor functions that lose L bits, then take the W-wise product formed by the, by the injective family of the, of the lossy collection, and this family turns out to be one way under any distribution as long as the, uh, the entropy of the distribution is high enough. And uh, so also another observation here is that the, the lossiness and the entropy is, uh, neg is they're correlated in a negative way. So uh, since our goal here is somehow reduce the, the required lossiness, uh, 
equivalently, we, we want to kind of find distribution that uh, increase this, uh, the entropy of the, of the input. And uh, this gives the, uh, the way to go. So we need these two properties. The first property is that we need this reconstructability property. Given any D, uh, any D components of the input vector, we should be able to uh, reconstruct the entire input vector. Again, this is for the, for the simulation in the CCA security proof. And uh, fortunately, we, we know ways how to sample for such distribution. So one can think of uh, the D out of W threshold sequence, uh, secret sharing schemes, where uh, we can sample uh, vectors uh, that uh, have this property, this reconstructability property. And uh, one other important thing is that, uh, in some sense, this distribution are uh, what we call D-wise independent distributions. So the overall entropy of this distribution is uh, D times N, if we consider that each component of the input is an N-bit string. And uh, now, somehow, the goal is to, for a fixed N, we need to increase this, this D uh, as much as possible. And now, this takes us to the second uh, idea. Uh, recall that this D was exactly the distance of the error correcting code. And uh, in the encryption scheme, starting from two verification keys, uh, VK1 and VK2, uh, and uh, considering the encodings uh, under the uh, error correcting code, uh, the basic uh, property that we desire is that for any two different verification keys, we want the corresponding encodings to be as far apart as possible. And uh, this translates to the, to the requirement of having an error correcting code with a uh, high uh, distance. And uh, any code that uh, belongs to the family of uh, MDS codes, maximum, dis maximum distance separable codes, uh, seem to be enough. In our instantiation, we are using Reed Solomon codes that uh, do meet this with the, the singleton bound. So the, the distance D can be uh, as large as W minus K, where W again is the length of the code word, and K is the, the length of the input of the, of the plain word. So I'll try to, to put, uh, I'll try to put everything together uh, and so how to get uh, CCA security from n, one lossy trapdoor functions. Again, we have this error correcting code, uh, read so long with this high uh, uh, distance. And again, the input distribution with d times n uh, entropy and uh, this reconstructability property. And let's say k, uh, k e equals n to the epsilon for some constant epsilon, whereas w, how, uh, how big are uh, product is, our dire product is, is n to the theta for some theta larger than 1 to the epsilon. So if, if, you, do, if you do the math, the overall entropy of the in input distribution tends out to be larger than this, uh, strictly larger than this uh, uh, quantity. And then going back to our lemma, uh, if you plug in 1 here instead of L, uh, we show how that there exist uh, input distributions that have high enough entropy. And so the corresponding uh, the corresponding family of injective functions, starting from an n, one loss interrupter function, turns out to be secure one way under such, uh, such kind of uh, distributions. And this, uh, in particular, by instantiating uh, with this loss interrupter function the construction of Rosen and Segev, uh, we get that n, one loss interrupter functions imply CCA security in a black box way. And choosing the, the parameters here more aggressively or doing some kind of loss simplification you can drive this down to anything which is 1 over poly. And as a quick overview, uh, so the, the two parameters that govern the, the lossiness, the required lossiness is this distance D and the W, uh, the size of the, the components of the product. And in the, in the initial distribution, D was 1, which means D mean, 1 means that we can recover the whole uh, input vector by just a simple component, and this gave a highly correlated distribution, so distribution with uh, uh, very low mean entropy. And this was the reason that the, the, the lossiness required was rather high. So we saw how the Rosen Segev, if, instanti if instantiated correctly with Reed Solomon codes and high mean entropy, uh, distribution can take us down to the whole, uh, to, to, to this uh, very small amount of uh, required lossiness. And uh, so let's see how the picture has changed. Before, this was the threshold uh, of required lossiness to get uh, CCA security in a black box way from lossy functions. And uh, the only construction that, uh, 
that we knew that achieved this, uh, uh, this much of lossiness was VDH, already by a piquet waters paper. And now by uh, reducing the, the required lossiness to this level, already uh, we get the LWE already has enough lossiness. The construction of LTDS based on LWE already has enough lossiness to instantiate the generic construction and also uh, the QR, the, the modular square, square function from the previous talk and also the RSA function from the forthcoming paper uh, based on a fee hiding assumption. So let me now uh, finish the technical part of the talk by giving a, simplified, a simple construction of a slightly lossy trapdoor function. Uh, let me start with the, the hardness assumption first. So on the left-hand side, the, the, there is a, we sample a modulus N using uh, two primes. So this is a product of two primes. And on the other hand, we have uh, N prime being a product of three primes. And they have the same uh, bit length. So the, the hardness assumption is that uh, these two ways of sampling uh, give modu moduli that are uh, indistinguishable. <coughs> and given this hardness assumption, there is a quite natural way to construct a uh, family of lossy trapdoor function, namely the injective uh, generation algorithm uh, samples uh, n plus 1 bit uh, modulus n, which is a product of two primes, and the trapdoor is the factorization of this uh, modulus. The lossy is a product, uh, the, is a modulus of, uh, which is a product of three primes, and the evaluation algorithm is quite similar with the construction you saw in the previous talk. Uh, we again use the, the, the squaring function, and then we add two extra bits uh, in order to make the function injective. And uh, in the paper, we prove that under this assumption, the, the, the family is n, 1 uh, over 4 lossy trapdoor function. And the proof can be sketched briefly as follows. The indistinguishability of the, uh, of the lossy and the injective mode uh, is uh, immediate from the assumption itself. And then for the invertibility, uh, the first component, once we have uh, the factorization, we can invert this first component and get, at most, these four pre-images. And then by using the second bit, we can filter out two more, uh, uh, two more pre-images. And then using the, the Jacobi symbol, we can be left with just a single candidate pre-image, which is exactly the pre-image of the function. And lastly, for the lossiness, uh, one way to go is we partition the, the input. So we consider functions that have n-bit strings as, as their domain. and um, so uh, when we think, uh, we, we start with uh, co-prime inputs, co-prime to n, then uh, because of th this is a product of three primes, this is A to 1 mapping. So already the, the image of this set is, is quite small. It's bounded by this uh, quantity. And now uh, these are already upper bounds for the size of the sets of these sets themselves, not necessarily their image. So if you add everything up, you are left with something uh, which is uh, upper bounded by 2 to the n minus 1 over 4. So the image of the n-bit strings, of the whole, si uh, of the whole uh, set of n-bit strings, is upper bounded. The size is upper bounded by this quantity, which gives us the 1 over 4 uh, lossiness. And let me just finish with uh, some conclusions. In summary, uh, we do believe that uh, even slightly lossy trapdoor functions are a powerful primitive. In particular, we saw how to use the lossy trapdoor functions in a black box way and get a CCA secure public key encryption, starting from uh, lossy trapdoor functions that have a very small amount of lossiness. And we also saw the way to construct a slightly lo lossy trapdoor function uh, using uh, the two versus three primes assumption. And as a possible direction for uh, future research, one main question is what does uh, slight, slight lossiness really buy? So in particular, is it possible to construct uh, uh, slightly lossy trapdoor functions and therefore CCA security from hardness assumption that we don't know how to get CCA security from? And uh, the other question is, okay, we constructed CCA security in a black box way. Is it possible to construct uh, other primitives, again, starting from uh, slightly lossy trapdoor functions? Thank you. <laughs>